And I, I agree with you that um, as our scopes have developed so much that from looking through, uh, you know, even fiber optic scopes towards the high definition uh, a view we have nowadays um, uh, is an incredible change and makes it more easy to see serrated polyps. However, I think you can still easily overlook them because they have about the same color as the surrounding mucosa. They are usually not very elevated. They might be slightly elevated, but usually they're not like um, a real sessile lesion. So it might be um, easy to overlook them, especially if they're laid under a little bit of uh, attaching or adherent mucus mm. or maybe some remnant stool. So I think um, overlooking is easy, although your scopes are better. Um, and yes, I, I do think there's, there's piling evidence nowadays they are relevant um, uh, because um, Looking at the uh, molecular characteristics of cancer, you ca we can kind of predict from what lesions they came. And we see that about 15 to, to, to 30 percent of all the colorectal cancers have a molecular profile with a lot of methylation markers and uh, a lot of specific hallmarks that they seem to arrive from colorectal cancer and or from uh, serrated polyps. And um, especially looking at post-colonoscopy mm -hmm. colorectal cancers, mm -hmm. um, the percentage is even a bit higher. So of course, um, we need to understand better and more. Uh, we are still learning. In the Netherlands now, we are going to molecularly profile all our post-colonoscopy cancers within the bowel cancer screening program to and to relate that to um, po uh, serrated polyp detection rate will be, again, I think, more evidence. But for me, it's very clear. We need to detect sessile serrated lesions um, and we need to resect them radically. So you, you just hinted upon, I'm really glad, um, but the serrated detection rate, right, uh, it should be about 11% in the right colon, so quite a bit lower than the ADR. Do you think we should all keep track of our SDR and do you do it? Yes. So uh, that's a very relevant question. There's, there's clear data by several big studies that uh, the, um, as an endoscopist, your ADR, adenoma detection rate, um, predicts the chance of the patient's use scope of having a post-colonoscopy cancer. We nowadays have that same type of, of, um, uh, of uh, uh, correlation for serrated polyps. We've done that in the Netherlands in a fit positive population, I must say. The, Austral uh, the Austrians have now also data. Um, and, and I think um, it's very important to realize that, yes, next to adenomas, serrated polyps are relevant and you should detect them. And what we've actually shown in our very large national study is that um, um, there was a, a correlation with ADR as published many times on post-colonoscopy cancer. But apart from that, also serrated polyp had a detection rate had a clear correlation, even taking out the ADR. So it's an additive um, uh, correlation. So we should keep track of both. Yes. Yeah. I, I would like you to play the video you brought because um, um, if possible, we would like to play, ah, oh, there it goes. So because, we, 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 we have a lot of theory uh, on, on serrated polyps and you can definitely look uh, at Geeks Online, but it's nice to show this example in particular. Can you tell us some more about this particular case and look at that. It's, it's incredible. Yes. This. So I thought this was a remarkable case and that's why we made a video. Actually, I was supported with one of my greatest research fellows, uh, Arne Blijenberg. And what you see here is a very flat serrated lesion. And I think you mainly see it. Can I stop it for one second? Um, you mainly see it, well, okay, next time. Because it's just overlying the mucosa like a, a very thin um, mm -hmm. paper, right? A, that you can look through a little bit. So you don't see the vessels very well. It seems a little bit more lighter, but not very clear. And you can see it was also possible to demarcate, although not easy. And that's of course very important before you head on to any intervention. 
Anyways, there's four criteria for an optical diagnosis of um, a lesion. Um, and uh, first of all, of course, we have NICE. And NICE is not very useful for a distinction between uh, an hyperplastic or serrated or whatever lesion, an adenoma and a cancer. But, but those serrated lesions are nowhere in, that, in that, those criteria. That's why we made up the WASP criteria. And we came up with four quite specific hallmarks of serrated polyps. And you can see them on the left lower end of sessile serrated lesions. It's a clouded surface, which I always say it's the Dutch clouds, <laughs> the mountain clouds. So it's like this and not a nice flat one. I saw them last night here in <laughs> Kento as well, with nice we'll the sun, the the with the sun on it. So, yeah. so clouded surface. Uh, indistinctive and vague border. That's, I think, very typical. It might be very difficult to delineate the lesion. The lesion. Irregular shape. Smaller adenomas usually are very round and nice, and those ones are usually um, not regular. And then the dark spots on using MBI or BLI. And I think that becomes very clear here as well. Yeah. So instead of an adenoma, which has a white spot with dark linings around it, which is the vessels, and then you look, is it a three... Uh, a three or a four L or four S, you know, um, three. Well, anyways, um, here it's the opposite. It's like the 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 the, 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 the other way. So it's a dark crypt with white lining, and that's very typical for a sessile serrated lesion.